Travel insurance and travel, rightly, go hand in hand, but one of the questions I receive most is, do I need travel insurance? Well, let's talk about it. I'm Adrian, the Cruise and Travel Guy. I produce cruise-related content right here on YouTube every week, so if you're new to the channel and enjoy the video, please consider subscribing. I need to start this video by letting you know that this is general information only. I am not providing you with personalized advice. The old adage is, if you can't afford travel insurance, then you can't afford to travel. And I happen to believe that's true. Just like with your home or car, insurance can help protect you from unforeseen events and circumstances. Everything from cancellations to injuries, lost luggage and personal items can be covered by an insurance policy, but there are a few things to consider, which we'll get into now. Generally speaking, travel insurance prices are dependent on the type of policy you buy, where you're traveling to, the type of traveling and activities you're doing, the duration of the trip and your age, as well as any pre-existing medical conditions you might have. All of these will ultimately affect how much you pay for a travel insurance policy. As with insurance on land, you can reduce the amount you pay for your policy, otherwise known as a premium, by reducing the coverage that you take out and by increasing the excess that you contribute towards any claim. Choosing an excess can be a bit of a balancing act. A higher excess will usually result in a lower premium, while a lower excess or zero dollar excess will result in a higher premium. You should take into consideration what you would be willing and able to contribute towards a claim, should you need to make one, before you make your decision about your excess level. There are many types of travel insurance that cover specific types of travel, but importantly, there are those that exclude types of travel and activities. I can't stress how important it is to familiarize yourself with the product disclosure statement, or PDS, of the insurance you have purchased or are considering purchasing. The PDS outlines the coverage and limits of the travel insurance policy. It also outlines what is excluded. In some cases that might be skiing, motorbike or moped riding, and even scuba diving. These activities and others often require you to specially select them when designing your insurance policy. Ocean cruising in many cases requires that you choose that specific type of coverage. So it's very important to know what travel you'll be undertaking and what activities you're likely to do when you get to your destination. Plus, as the insured party, you generally have responsibilities and obligations under the terms of your policy. Some policies will require that you make contact with the insurer as soon as practical to advise them that an incident has occurred. Some policies will even restrict your right to make a claim if you weren't following local rules, laws or regulations, for example not wearing a helmet when on a bike. Inebriation or intoxication with alcohol or drugs is another thing that can restrict your right to make a claim under the terms of your policy. The PDS will also outline claim limits, including the value of individual items. So if you're, for example, traveling with an expensive piece of jewelry or a watch, you might want to take particular note of what the maximum limit for that item is in your PDS, and if necessary, purchase additional coverage. Although there are exclusions, travel insurance can also cover cancellation costs if you need to change your plans and the reason for the change falls within the list of defined events in the PDS. It's important to choose the right value of cancellation cover, but also take note that some bookings for hotels and tours can sometimes be cancelled without penalty. All of these details are outlined in your PDS and it's important that you read it and understand it before you purchase insurance. It goes without saying that you need to be completely transparent and honest when answering questions that are part of the quoting process. As part of that process, you'll be asked questions about yourself and your traveling party with a particular focus on pre-existing medical conditions. In some cases, automatic coverage is applied for medical conditions and in others, the insurer will require further details and might request a medical assessment. All of these details will be covered during the quoting process. Failure to provide accurate and up-to-date information may impact your ability to make a claim later. 
Taking out a policy for an individual trip is probably what most of us do, but if you're a frequent traveler, you might find better value in taking out a multi-trip or annual policy. These will generally provide you with cover for multiple trips, although usually with a limited duration for any one trip. It depends on the policy, but if you even have two trips planned for the coming year, it is worth comparing the cost of an individual policy with that of a multi-trip policy and seeing where the better value lies. Many credit cards offer complementary insurances and travel insurance is usually bundled in with that. Just like standalone travel insurance policies, banks and financial institutions offer a PDS for their respective policies, so it's again important to make sure you familiarize yourself with yours. A general requirement to enact credit card travel insurance is that you've paid for the trip with your credit card. Credit card insurance doesn't always get the best rap, but I had an example a few years ago on Voyager of the Seas where I actually found it was better than my standalone travel insurance policy. During the cruise, I accidentally dropped my iPhone and cracked the screen. I made a claim through my standalone travel insurance policy and was rejected, and then I remembered I had travel insurance through my credit card provider and was actually successful in making a claim for the damage. This again highlights the absolute importance of knowing what you are and aren't covered for, and again, all of that is in your PDS. Some destinations just require that you hold a travel insurance policy. In particular, this came to light last year when South Pacific cruising resumed and countries like New Caledonia began to require that all international visitors held valid travel insurance. Your travel agent will of course make you aware of any individual location requirements in the process of making a booking. Whether your cruise sails domestically or internationally, once you're on board a ship, you will not be covered by Australia's Medicare program. Any medical attention required on board, including medical evacuations, will be an out-of-pocket expense. You can always go direct to a travel insurer via their website or telephone, or speak to your travel agent. Agents have been trained in the travel insurance products that they're selling, but importantly can provide general advice only. Specific questions around the coverage and limits of the policy you're looking at buying can only be answered by the travel insurance company. And I once again remind you that this video is general advice only. Ultimately, whether you purchase travel insurance or not is up to you, unless of course your destination requires it. For me though, I refuse to travel without it. And I do go a step further and I read the PDS to make sure that I'm aware of any of my obligations and duties under the terms of the policy. Well, I hope this video has helped you answer that question that I seem to receive a lot. Do I need a travel insurance policy? Let me know what you think below. Do you think you need one? If you are looking at booking a cruise, you can head to my website, thecruiseandtravelguide.com.au. If you haven't done so already, you can give me a follow on Facebook and Instagram at The Cruise and Travel Guy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. And choosing a zero dollar or low excess will result in a... Wait, what? <laughs> There are many types of travel insurance that cover specific types of travel and activities, but importantly, there are those that exclude certain types of travel and activities. It's very repeated. These activities and others sometimes require you to pay an extra special, what? These activities and others often require you to specially select those activities some policies will restrict your right to make a claim if you weren't following local rules like regular.